how I'm going to get to eight figures this bull run in a hands-off way. So strategies that don't take much time to implement. I think you guys will find it really useful. Today is actually an incredibly interesting day in the markets. And I've made this presentation yesterday just because of how much has like happened today. Everybody, I'm joined today by my good friend, Daniel, multi, multi seven figure crypto trader, one of the brightest minds in the space, uh, pretty loyal following in the space as well. And somebody who just really understands how to think about the market. So I wanted to have Daniel come in and do a session for you guys, largely centered around how he's preparing for the upcoming bull market, how he's thinking about his trades um, and what he sees as the most intelligent um, sort of, inv well, investment thesis and trading strategy over the next couple of years. So Daniel, I really appreciate you jumping on, man. I think what would be really cool to start would be like a quick intro to you for those who aren't familiar with you and your content. Um, and then we'll go from there. Thanks, champ, for the intro. I appreciate that. So yeah, I'm Daniel, 24 from Australia, and I've been investing since like 2017, roughly like pretty much the exact top, December 2017. From you know losing a bunch of money at the start till now, I started with 5K. I've got multi-millions now. And I worked with Tate in Hustlers University. I'm sure all of you guys have probably heard of Hustlers University. Um, that was really cool. We went from zero to 150,000 students in like one and a half years. So it's like zero to 10 mil a month in that company, which is pretty crazy. And things got a bit hectic. Honestly, wasn't worth my time. So I've dropped that about a year ago and focusing on my own business, my own investments. And on the side, I do work in Jens Croquet Club, just helping the guys in there with investing. If you don't know Jens Croquet Club, it's like Iman Gadzi's network. He just has like a high level network of entrepreneurs. So I guess because I'm teaching in Jens Croquet Club, that's a bit of a reflection of how I approach crypto. The way I approach crypto is it's very hands off. If you're a business owner, if you're focused on your career, the strategies I follow is like designed for that type of person. So I know you mentioned, Champ, that's a bit not really trading, it's more investing. People like use the word trading, but they mean investing. So most of the stuff I'm talking about today is like how I'm going to get to eight figures this bull run in a hands off way. So strategies that don't take much time to implement. I think you guys will find it really useful. Today is actually an incredibly interesting day in the markets. And I've made this presentation yesterday just because of how much shit has like happened today. So I think it'll be really interesting for you guys. The market has been going absolutely ballistic. I've made like, I'm up like a mil in the past 60 days. It's so stupid. Like the market is going like so stupid. So I think it'll be really interesting. I got a little presentation and then I think we'll do a QA and a afterwards to answer any questions you guys have about how to approach crypto uh, this bull run. So yeah. Thank you, Daniel. Appreciate you coming in, my friend. I'll pass you the mic back. Let's get right into it. It's awesome. Yeah, sweet. I'll just share my screen. Um, let's see if I can figure this one out. Cool. Let me know if you can see my screen now. Got it. All right. So how many we got on the call right now? How many of you guys are doing crypto at the moment? I'm curious. Is everyone put like a thumbs up if you're doing crypto so I can see you? Cool. Okay. There's a few of you. Drop a me in the chat. Yeah. Drop a me in the chat if you have more than like 10K US at the moment. Because if you have less than like 5, 10K, it's probably not for you to do crypto, but I'd be curious to see like how much capital you guys are working with. Cool. Cool. I can't really see it in the chat, but that's all good. Uh, let me get rid of some of this stuff on the screen here. All right, move this here. Anyway, that's the best I can do. It seems I can't shrink this thing. So yeah, I got a little presentation. I want to go over my strategy to hit eight figures. I want to go over, has the bull run started? And what are the expectations for this bull run? And I want to go over pretty much everything. But first, again, my background, um, I sort of discussed this before, but I, I worked with Tate, you can see here in Dubai, worked with Iman. Uh, this is in Dubai as well. And uh, yeah, my goal of this bull run is to make eight figures, but it's not only to make eight figures, it's to pay zero capital gains tax in uh, any personal tax or any company tax fully legally. And that's what I've got set up in the past couple months. And another goal is to have the banking infrastructure to handle that. So a lot of you guys, maybe some of you have a lot of money. If you make multiple millions this bull run, the biggest problem people have is they don't have an exit strategy. They don't know how to get out. Like Because crypto is like a casino. You get in the casino, you make a bunch of money. It's time to cash out your chips. Most people just don't have an exit. They don't know where the door is to get out of the casino. And so they end up gambling away the life-changing money that they've made. And there's only like 0.1% of people in crypto who actually have the infrastructure set up who've actually made millions and are able to keep it. So I'll talk a little bit about that as well on this call. So let's look at where we are in the bull market. So you can see here, this is an overarching chart of the total market cap for crypto. You can see that there's a key level here and we've broken above it. Last time this happened, it was the 2020 bull run. And you know we're in a similar instance right now. So we've done the bear market, we've done the accumulation range, and we're now in the beginning of a new uptrend. So here's the bull market set 
set up. Here's the five different things that I'm seeing that is going to make this bull run crazy. So number one, we have the Bitcoin ETF. Okay. I'm sure a lot of you guys have been hearing about these ETF things. Like what's this ETF? Well, let's talk about the ETF. So there's a tweet here. Uh, this one. Wait, no, not this one. So this is a bit of an overview of where we are in the bull market. So the rates have peaked. Interest rates have peaked. The Bitcoin four-year cycle just completed its first quarter. ETFs are coming. Asset class acceptance accelerating. The confluence is near perfect. Now, this guy talks here about the ETF. So before I show this video, let me just give you a little bit of a brief explanation of what is an ETF. So most of the exposure that people have to stocks is through what's called an ETF. An ETF is a product which inside of it contains a number of different stocks. So instead of you having to pick an individual stock to invest in, you just invest in a basket of stocks and you get exposure to many different sectors. You're diversified. It takes the guesswork and the thinking out of investing. It's basically investing for lazy people. Now, what they're trying to make is a Bitcoin ETF, meaning an ETF that gets you exposure to Bitcoin without actually having to buy the Bitcoin yourself. So there's at least a million people in the world, plus there's probably much more than that, but there's at least a million people in the world who would buy Bitcoin who just are too lazy to do it, or they don't see it on any of their stock exchanges, so they don't trust it. So when Bitcoin gets an ETF, it basically opens it up to a much wider group of investors. And now that there's a much wider group of investors, it is going to make the price go significantly up because the price is a, is a battle between supply and demand. When you have more demand and less supply, prices go up. And so there's a bit of a video here. Um, we'll go we'll watch this one now. What's the impact of $100 billion coming into Bitcoin? Uh, you know, well, I think we've seen what the impact of, you know, $10 billion coming into Bitcoin in 2021 is. What's the impact of $100 billion coming into Bitcoin? Uh, I think it could 10x Bitcoin. That's kind of my gut feel. So, you know, uh, and, and roughly speaking, rough math on these numbers is we kind of know that, uh, well, let's say it's at right now at 50,000. I'm just going to round it up to 50,000. 100 billion at 50,000 is 2 million Bitcoin, right? How are you going to get 2 million Bitcoin into an ETF when there's only 2 million Bitcoin trading on exchanges right now? You know, it, Michael Saylor is not selling his Bitcoin. Block One is not selling their Bitcoin. So Satoshi is not selling his Bitcoin uh, or her Bitcoin. Um, <laughs> so you sort of get the point. So what he's trying to say there is that his math calculations is that there's $100 billion of capital that will want exposure to Bitcoin once the ETF comes out. If they tried to buy $100 billion of Bitcoin right now, it would be 2 million Bitcoin, but you can't actually buy that much Bitcoin. It's just not possible. You, there's not enough people willing to sell it to you. And so when there's a lot of demand, like I just said, and not much supply, that leads to a bull market. And that's why we've had this uptrend here. It's because of people front running, getting ready for the ETF, which is likely to come out in January, but there's no guarantee. So in January, potentially ETF comes out. Now in April, we have the Bitcoin halving, which is going to halve the amount of Bitcoin that's created every year. Okay. So you hold US dollars, it inflates like crazy. You know, during COVID, you lose 20% of the value of your money. Bitcoin is now going to inflate half of what it used to. So that's a very, very strong sort of store value narrative going into this bull run. Now, number three, we also have the Federal Reserve announcing this week that they're going to cut interest rates in 2024. So the Fed chairman just told you that they're only thinking about easing from here. We have an ETF on the horizon to funnel inflows and the percentage of Bitcoin supply held by long-term holders looks like this. So you can sort of see, I'm showing you these tweets to sort of show you the narrative that's forming that's going to drive the next bull run. And you can see here, the Fed holds rates steady, indicates three rate cuts coming into 2024. So basically interest rates will go down next year. That has historically been what really helps bull markets. Now, you could argue that interest rate cuts are coming because they expect a recession. But ultimately, like if you look at what has happened prior for the past 10, 20, 30 years, lower interest rates is a good thing for markets. Okay. And as well, I want to show you this chart here. I hope you guys can sort of see what this is showing. So Bitcoin is in yellow and blue is basically the growth of money, basically the, how much money is being created in economies around the world. So the Federal Reserve, the European Central Bank, the People's Bank, I think it's the People's Bank of China, I'm pretty sure. And then the Bank of Japan. You can see that during when the price goes up significantly, it's during when we have a lot of money being created. And when the market goes down, it's when we have money not being created, being taken out of the system. And you can see here that when the amount of new money coming in hit its peak, that was actually the peak for Bitcoin. You can see here that, that was the highest point. And so what do we have here? Well, we have central banks around the world beginning to turn back on, not necessarily the printing press, but the growth of money is starting to come back. Okay. And that is what 
what you need to see for bull runs to occur. So we've covered the ETF, we've covered the halvening, we've covered the interest rates. Let's talk about the four-year cycle. So crypto has a habit, more of a habit, a repeating pattern of having an entire bull and bear market within four years. And if you look at what has historically happened every single time, you can see that the length of time between the different sort of movements is always the same, right? Let me see if I can get a little drawing tool. You can see that we have this bottoming period and we've just finished the bottoming period here. So we're set up in terms of the cycle for this next bull run to occur, okay? And last but not least, stocks are at an all-time high or near an all-time high. So let's go look at the stock market, the major stock index, the S uh, SPX, S&P 500. You can see that we are very close to breaking an all-time high. Now, breaking an all-time high in the stock market does something to investor psychology. When you see that the stock market is at levels that it has never been before, that happens and it, it basically shifts people's perspective on what they view the market is going to do. So before stocks are at a new all-time high, they think like inflation is going to go rampant, there's going to be a recession, there's going to be all these things going wrong. New all-time highs, oh wow, okay, maybe the economy isn't as bad as we originally thought. Wow, maybe I should be in stocks, I should be taking risk again. It flips investors to have a risk on sort of approach to investing. The more risk investors want to take, the more likely they are to go into crypto, right? So increased risk tolerance, moving out to other asset classes like crypto with Bitcoin, for example. So this is the five major catalysts that over the next six to 18 months, I believe is setting us up to grow into a multi-trillion dollar asset class. And that's why I'm allocated pretty much exclusively to crypto right now with a multi seven figure portfolio. So let me check chat if you guys are all understanding everything. Yep, looks good. So this is how I'm going to clear eight figures this bull run, or at least try to. I've got three strategies. Number one is long-term investing. Number two is pre-sales. Number three is automated airdrop farming. So let's have a look at pre-sales first. So essentially to explain what a pre-sale is, when a new project launches, they don't have a token a lot of the time. There's a project, there's no token or coin you can buy. But what they do is, is they'll say to people, okay, you guys can give us money to help fund our project and we will give you our token when it launches. So we do this through what's called a syndicate. Now I've got access to a private syndicate and we get some of the best deals in crypto. So you can see these are the projects that we've invested in so far. And the goal is that you put money into these projects. It's locked up for about a year. And the goal is that maybe some of them fail, but the ones that succeed go on to make 10, 50, 100 X plus returns. And just to give you an example of one of the ones that our syndicate did, SWE, you can see here, we did this one. I actually didn't do this one because I wasn't in the syndicate at the time, but you can see that over here, SWE is currently at a $670 million market cap. This is up about 60 X from the entry that the syndicate got, right? So you buy into the project before it has a token, the token comes out, you're locked for a little bit, you get your tokens unlocked, 60 X on your money, you literally did nothing and you've made money. Right? Hey Daniel, really yes. quickly for the people on this call who haven't participated in uh, ICOs before, can you talk a little bit about the typical cliffs investing schedules that you're seeing when you invest in these? Yep. So pre-sales is not just this game where you can just buy anything and make money. The key with pre-sales is timing. If you're in the middle to end of a bull market and you're doing pre-sales where you're locked up for like a year, you're going to get your tokens unlocked into the middle of the next bear market, which is a terrible idea. So the only time that you need you should be doing pre sales is either during the bear market or at the beginning of a bull run. Because if you do it later, you're going to get unlocked really late. The token's going to not have done you know good price performance. It's just not a good idea. So usually with these projects, your expectation is when you invest, it's a 12 month wait to receive at least half of your tokens. But it really depends project to project. So for example, let's talk about Monad. This one's a little bit secretive. I can't talk too much about it, but let's just say that there's an eight month cliff. So when the token drops, you have to wait eight months to receive your tokens. So let's say the token comes out in February, you wait 10 months. So what's that? Uh, like November. So November next year, and then your tokens begin unlocking. So you don't get them all at once. They unlock over time. So Monad would be an example of a, like a bad, like a long deal, I would say. Now, something like Avantis, I think. I, I can't think of, I can't remember the exact specifics of every deal, but there's some deals, for example, where there is a token coming out in, let's say, February, and you get 7.5% of the, the tokens straight away. And then it's what's called a linear unlock. So slowly over time, linearly, you receive tokens for six to 12 months. But as you can see, like there's a, a long waiting period. So you do them early at the right time in the market. So right now, so that when it unlocks, you're at the peak of the bull run, you get the best possible exit and you know you you make money. So does that sort of make sense, champ? 
and and guys in the chat. Yes, 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 yes. I just I uh that was what I was I was sort of hoping you would explain because like I think that sometimes people who have never invested in ICO, ICOs before, excuse me, are like, oh, I just sell it for a hundred x right as soon as it launches. And the reality <laughs> is that it's like a, it's a more complex game than that. And there's this sort of intricate balance of risk reward um that you have to play. But you did a great job explaining it. Yeah, it's all about everything in crypto is about timing. There's no such thing as just like easy gains. It's only easy sometimes, but most of the time it's hard. It, it's all about timing. You know, things can be easy if you time it correctly. So let's say you got into SWE. The difficulty was the timing of waiting for that good project at the right time. And then that thing's up, you know, 60x. And keep in mind, it's up 60x, but it doesn't mean you got all your tokens back. It means you've got a portion of your tokens back. And over the next six to 12 months, you get the rest of them. So if we're in a bull market for the next six to 12 months, this token is not going to die. It's going to perform decently. You know, it might even go up 10x from here potentially. You know, it depends. If we have an alt season, everything tends to go up five to 10x, even if it sucks. Even stuff like XRP goes up. So you can sort of begin to see the why I'm doing this. Now, my goal is that 30% of the journey to eight figures is going to come from pre-sales. I've done all of these deals except for SWE, Layer Zero, Eigenlayer, and ZK Sync. I've done pretty much every other deal. So we'll see how that goes. Now, let's talk about long-term investing. This is the one that all of you guys can take away and do today. Okay, pre-sales, hard for you to do. Long-term investing, you can all do this. So long-term investing is the number one strategy every single person needs to follow. It doesn't matter if you're full-time in crypto. It doesn't matter if you're focused on your business. This one you can do. So the goal with long-term investing is that during the first eighth of a bull run, you buy and then you hold throughout the course of the bull run and you sell during the final one eighth. Okay, so let me do a little drawing to illustrate this. So if this is a, a bull and bear market cycle, right? Let's just imagine that this is like a 10 year time frame. You're wanting to buy in this period and you're wanting to sell in this period, right? This middle period is where all the traders come out and they try to make money, but they always underperform the gains that the person who just long-term invests makes, right? You look at all the best guys on crypto Twitter, they all tell you, yeah, I actually made most of my money from long-term investing or they made their money from, you know, having an affiliate link for some exchange. The trading never actually made most of the money. So like, I don't even recommend trading, okay? Buy during the first eighth of a bull run set, which we're in right now, or just leaving and then sell during the last eighth. Not the top, not the bottom, just the rough regions, okay? So I have an algo, which I use to do long-term investing. So let me show you this now on the daily chart. This is an algo that I designed. I've been using it for two years now. I made it in uh, August, 2021. This is the results. So you can sort of see the yellow and green is buy and the red is sell. The red dots, the red crosshairs and the triangles are sell. So you can see here buying Bitcoin at the bottom. This is where we accumulated. Further accumulation occurred over here. We didn't action these. You can sell a little bit here, buy some more exposure here, and then you're getting some sell signals up here. So the idea is that you use this to buy low during a bull run or whatever system you decide to use. You don't have to use this. You can use any system in the market that you find is useful. Hold during the course of a bull run and then sell towards the end. Let's talk about my picks for the bull run. So I got a Bitcoin, Ethereum, Solana, Toshi, OXO. These are my expectations of the returns from their current price. Obviously, it doesn't have to play out like this, but this is just what I'm expecting by the end of the bull run. With three hours per week, this system, so buying low, selling high on these coins, I expect to make up 50% of the journey to eight figures. Now, I, I mentioned at the start of this call, I wanted to show you something that has happened in the past week or so, which has been really interesting. So my biggest thesis going into this bull run has basically been that every single chain Solana, base are going to have their own Dogecoin equivalent. And I've been buying about one or two months ago, the Dogecoins of these chains. So for example, we bought Bonk at a $10 million market cap and Bonk is now worth $1.4 billion. So it's up 1.140x on the initial entry. And that's in the span of about October 23. What day is it today? December 15, in about you know a month and a half. And we also bought, I actually made, put a video out at a $2.2 million market cap saying that Toshi is the number one coin to 100x this bull run. And I accumulated half a percent of the supply and it's now at a $70 million market cap. So that's up about 28x. So this is one of my biggest theses going into this bull run. It's basically that every single chain, so Ethereum, Solana, Base, you know, Cosmos, all of these chains are going to have their own meme token. And that meme token is going to be like the, the cheerleader of their chain, which is going to capture a lot of value. And so I expect Toshi to go to like a billion dollar market cap this bull run. So that's probably going to, if that happens, it's a 400x from the initial entry. Who knows if it'll get there, but that's at least my expectation based on my like entire thesis on this coin. But you can see like you can make crazy money. Like right now, a lot of you guys are probably like, oh, crypto's dead. Like, you know, no one's making money. 
140x, 30x, like, and that's on size. So that's $10,000 I put in and it's now $300,000 or something. So you can see like you can make crazy money. And uh, let's talk about the other way that I'm going to make money. So airdrop farming, automated airdrop farming. This is something you guys can do as well. So in February, I made six figures on an airdrop called the Blur airdrop. And everyone that I told to do it, we, we in total made about 700,000 US dollars. And this was with only 100 active wallets farming. So I have a little video here. This is me opening the airdrop just to show you some proof. This was in Bali. So, you know, you open this care package. Inside of the care package was 230,000 Blur. When the token launched, Blur got to about $1.20. So you can see that right there, I opened about $200,000 in, you know, an airdrop. And now, you know, we've gone from 100 wallets, which isn't that much, to 2,000 plus wallets. And we're farming base layer zero. And soon we're going to be farming Solana. Basically, you can automate the entire process with code. So it's not you know, some Chinese workers like pressing buttons on a computer, it's code executing transactions on many different blockchains with numerous wallets. And you qualify on thousands of wallets for the airdrop criteria. And then when they airdrop, you get money. So let me give you a recent example of how much money uh, could have been made on a recent airdrop. So on Solana, they did an airdrop for this project called Gito, and they gave out $225 million to Solana users. I think there was about 10,000 wallets that qualified. Qualified. The reason why only 10,000 people qualified was because everyone had thought Solana was dead. So no one was farming Solana, including me. I, I completely missed it. But the people who basically were farming it, I think it was about, oh, I can't remember. It might have been like ten, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 maximum per wallet. I can't remember exactly, yeah, but they Daniel, gave out a lot of money. Daniel, I was with, uh, do you know, Shra have you heard a token called Shrapnel before? Yeah, I've heard of Shrapnel. Okay, I was with all the Shrapnel, the Shrapnel team at Art Basel this weekend and Easy and a bunch of like Solana influencers were over there. And all of them, like 20 of them, Open twenty to thirty thousand dollar uh Gito airdrops and I was just sitting there like I just fucking missed it. The whole thing. I didn't have any I wasn't farming anything. Bro, I missed it too. I completely just, you can't catch every airdrop, but it's ridiculous, man. Like if you're right and you find the right opportunities, you can make a lot of money. So that's an example of a recent one. Obviously, like there's all like I know I make it maybe seem easy, but it's definitely not easy. You know, like some people made a bunch of money on Gito, but markets are zero sum. So someone had to not make money and only 10,000 people out of millions of people qualified. So most people just didn't even think about it. But the airdrop farming process for this airdrop was literally just going to their platform, staking Solana. That's all you had to do. It takes about three minutes and maybe $500 in capital. And that turned into like, what'd you say, like 30 grand or something? And that's for one wallet. Imagine if you did a hundred wallets, that's like ridiculous easy, money. Yeah, no, easy got like 20, 30 grand. He staked one Solana on four wallets. That's all. Yeah. So what's that like 20? It was probably like 10 bucks at the time. Yeah. So we put 40 US dollars in, turned it into $30,000. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, it's actually, it's stupid, stupid money if you pick the right ones. So anyway, you can, that's going to be 20% of the journey, I estimate, to eight figures. And you guys can all manually farm airdrops. You can manually do transactions on a number of blockchains. If you're watching this and you want to, you know, you got a bunch of time, you want to make money. One of the best ways to do it is if you don't have much money is to farm airdrops. So going onto these new blockchains like and, and using protocols like Solana, using all the different DeFi protocols. If you just do a little bit of money, like 40 bucks on different wallets takes like an hour. You do it on every single project, you know, you're going to catch airdrops. Now, obviously you're in Champ's uh, community, you're probably more focused on business and making money. I do recommend that as focus, but you know, this is another way you can make money. Okay. Let's go to, let me make sure I've covered everything here. Yep. Let's go on to the next section, I think. All right. So let's talk about what you would want, what you would need to make a lot of money this bull run. So number one, you need a strategy. So a lot of people, they come into crypto and they don't really know what they're doing. They sort of just buy a bunch of random coins that people on YouTube said, and they pretty much just buy it at a random price. Like they find the coin, they buy it today. They don't think about timing. They don't think about getting a good entry. They don't have an exit strategy. They don't have banking infrastructure set up. They don't have taxes set up. So even if they make money, they just get obliterated by their government. They just don't have a strategy. They're just sort of gambling. You need a strategy if you want to make lots of money and keep it this bull run. You also need access to the right information. So if you're trying to do crypto and you rely on Twitter and YouTube for what to do, you're just getting the same information that everyone else is getting. And if you just copy what everyone else is doing, you're going to get the same results as what everyone else gets, which is losing money. Now, obviously, you can go on Twitter and sometimes someone puts a, a coin that you buy and you can make money from it. But if you were to do the, if you were to use information that everyone has access to on a 20 year time frame, 
your net result is you lose money because you can't reliably make money just copying people from the internet, copying free information that everyone else has access to. You need some sort of information, some sort of alpha or some sort of edge in the market that gets you access to information before other people get it. So maybe you're really good at researching and you can create your own information, your own strategy, your own thesis behind investments. You know, you don't have to rely on anyone else. But you, you do need you know access to the right information. You need three hours a week to study and manage your portfolio. So a lot of you guys might be focused on business. If you don't have three hours a week, which is not much at all, I wouldn't even bother with crypto. You should just be focusing on you know basically hiring people to free up your time. Everyone should have at least three hours a week to do investing. So if you don't, you gotta you gotta free up your time. You need ten thousand dollars to invest with. If you got less than ten k, I wouldn't bother with crypto. You should be focused on investing into yourself, networking, etc. You want to have ideally someone more experienced in crypto who can guide you. So for example, maybe you know a friend who's good at crypto. Maybe you know someone who has runs a community you want to be a part of. But you should try to do crypto alongside someone who's good at it. Because for example, yesterday, a guy messaged me. He said he lost 13,000 US dollars because there was this hack that happened in relation to one of like all the basically every single like dap in crypto like application, if you used it during a certain time period, your wallet got drained. So he used his wallet during this time period where something got hacked and he lost 13,000 US dollars because he just didn't. And that that's what happens. You get hacked in crypto, you get scammed when you don't have someone who can steer you in the right direction and tell you, oh, that's a scam. You should avoid this. Don't do that. Don't do this. Because there's a bunch of landmines all in crypto. And if you, if you step on the landmine, you're going to get blown up. You also really need a hardware wallet. Okay. I don't know if I would recommend Ledger right now, but you would need some sort of hardware wallet to store your crypto so you can minimize the probability of being hacked or scammed. Okay. Even myself, I've been hacked or not hacked, more scammed. I lost like 60,000 US dollars in uh, February this year from some hack. And it's, it's so stupid. It's the little things, tiny little things where you go wrong. So you need a hardware wallet to store your money so it's safe. And you also are going to have to be able to control your emotions because as you've seen from all the things I've showed you, the Federal Reserve is about to begin easing. We have an ETF coming, which is going to unlock tens of billions of new money coming in. All, like, we have record highs of Bitcoin in the hands of long-term holders who don't sell, right? We have governments around the world beginning printing, right? We have asset class acceptance accelerating. Everyone around the world is now going to understand that crypto is an asset class that they need to be participating in, right? The biggest firms in the world, the biggest financial firms, BlackRock, are going to be telling all of the financial managers around the world, the money managers, and all the people who have money in their funds that crypto is something they need to invest in. Okay. This guy talking about the inflows. Uh, what else we got? We also have Pomp talking about it's going to be the greatest marketing blitz in finance history is coming, right? The Bitcoin ETF is the best marketing funnel crypto could ever possibly have for new people to come into the market. So at one point in the next six to 18 months, the market is going to be insanely euphoric. Everyone is going to be making money or your friends are going to be talking about crypto. It's going to be just like 2021, 2020. The same thing's going to happen again. It happens every four years. And at this point, you're going to have to be able to control your emotions, sell, not pay too much taxes and withdraw the money to your bank account. Okay. So I can talk a bit if you guys are interested about how I'm going to pay no tax and have good banking. Uh, we can get to that if you guys want to ask in the Q&A. But look, just so you know, I do run a mastermind. I don't want to make this a big shilling session, but if you're interested in being given everything to make money this bull run, um, you know, there's a bit of information here and we can talk about that. Anyone who's interested after the call, but I want to get firstly into the Q and A. So if you guys have any questions, I'd love to answer and help you guys some more with crypto for this bull run. Yeah, yeah. guys. Or, sorry, Ali. I was just going to say, if you guys have questions, just raise your hand and we'll go one by one. But Ali, go ahead. You go first. Yeah. I was just curious. So you had some really good deal flow in that private Discord ever. How did you get access to that uh, Discord community? Was that just like some networking thing or? Yeah, it's networking. So I'm in pretty much every like online networking group you can imagine. Not because I'm trying to like make tons of friends, but just because when you have value and you can put yourself in many different places, you end up just meeting people who you also can get value from. I've met guys that I've hired who have been amazing employees. I've got business partners. Uh, access to deal flow. It's all just from networking. So my recommendation, if you're trying to get access to things like this, is you need to be putting yourself in places where high-level people hang out and talk to these high-level people, give value, 
and they end up giving you value back. So I just give so much value out into the universe, or at least I try to, and people respect that and they want to try to help you back. They're just like, bro, like, just like, thank you for doing this. Like here, just get this deal flow. So that's at least how I would approach it if I was you. It's about networking, giving value and and you get it back. Sick. Uh, thank you, Daniel. Let's go to Evan. Evan? Evan. Okay. I'm going to ask him to come off mute. Do you guys think he raised his hand and walked away? All right, I'm going to ask. I'm going to ask you a question in the interim. Daniel. Daniel, let's talk about, Daniel, taxes. Let's talk about taxes. Let's talk about taxes. I want to I want to learn a little bit about your tax strategy because uh, I'm someone who has... I mean, dude, I, like I, my first crypto bull run, I paid over half a million dollars in taxes. So yeah, I need a little bit of sauce from you. Unfortunately, if you're from the US, the only thing you can really do is make a number of trusts and companies and incredibly complicated setups. And it costs a lot of money. It's a lot of mental headache. Yep. That's number one. Or you renounce your citizenship. You get another passport like St. Kitts or something, costs you a bunch of money. Uh, you have to leave the US. That's the only real two ways that you have, unfortunately. So I think all you guys are from the US, I guess, or? No, not all of us and all of us. Magnus, I think Magnus, you're, were you kidding or are you actually taxed in the BVIs? Uh, yeah, I got, I got something set up in the BVI, uh, but I'm Aussie as well. So um, I have far less headache compared to you guys in the States. Yeah, Aussies have it easy. We can just leave, uh, we can just easily leave as a Australian tax resident. And then you just either don't become a tax resident of anywhere else or become a tax resident of Dubai, for example. And so then you end up. So in order to not become a tax resident everywhere, anywhere else, you just have to travel a lot? Or how does that work? Yeah. So you can spend half a year in Bali and not be a tax resident. You can spend six months a year in Europe and not be a tax resident. You can, I can spend, you know, a few months a year this in Aussie, America. by the way. Yeah. Yeah. You can spend three months in Australia. Um, so I, I move around a lot anyway. So it's, it's good for the next two years. I'm going to actually add Dubai to my, uh, my tax. I'm going to be a tax resident of Dubai probably in like a year or two. Um, but look, you can you can literally just not be a tax resident of anywhere. That's my strategy for now. Actually, do you want a full explanation of what I'm doing? Would that would that yes. help? Okay. So you leave Australia as a tax resident. So you renounce your you know residency, tax residency. You have to prove you're a resident somewhere else. So I went to Bali. I'm now a Bali resident. I have a lease. Blah blah blah. That's proof that I've left Australia. I have set up a US LLC, which is a pass through company. So that allows you to have business income which doesn't get taxed in the US, but you get access to all of the US infrastructure. So I've got going to have US bank accounts. I'll connect, uh, my, I'll connect my bank accounts in the company to the exchanges. So I've got a company, a KYC account with Kraken, Gemini, Coinbase, et cetera. And this will allow me to offboard as much money as I, you know, they can handle or I want to into the company accounts. And then you, you can do some certain things, get the money into the bank accounts. Also, I'll go to Dubai. I'll get just residency, not tax residency. So I have to go to Dubai once every six months, just so that it's a hedge in case the, the US exchanges give problems. Let's say Kraken gave me issues. No problem. I can still use the Dubai related infrastructure. But Dubai for crypto sucks. Like the infrastructure is not there. The US is the best. And that's why I'm using the US. Like when you work with more money, you have to use the best. That makes sense. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I wish I had that option. I will instead just continue to get absolutely fucking <laughs> read by the United States government. It's literally, oh my God, I made a million dollars in crypto. No, I'm just kidding. I made 600,000. Evan just pinged though. He's back. Evan, I, I believe you had a question, my friend. Are you back? Yes. Hey, Daniel. Thanks so much for uh, hopping on with all of us. I wish my camera could be on right now, but really main question I've got is you mentioned scripting for airdrop farming. Um, is there a particular like uh, resource or a community you go to for those scripts? Do you code them yourself? Because airdrop farming is something I'm already involved in on a very light level, but I would like to amp that up pretty heavily. So I'm just looking for the most you know direct, cost efficient way to do that. I don't know if you have shit you sell, but um, any advice on that would be super helpful. Yeah. So whenever I build things, it's never like, okay, I have to try to find a guy for this. It's just like a guy will come to me and be like, oh yeah, that's a good idea. Let's do that. So for example, with this airdrop farming thing, I have a full-time developer and I've got a guy who designs the websites and I've also got another developer starting soon. So the full-time dev, I tell him what I would like to have coded. So I have a route maker. So this guy like makes me the route. So we go from, we bridge from this chain to this chain, swap tokens here, provide liquidity here, withdraw swap tokens here, like the whole route of the farming. So he designs the route and then we give it to the coder and then he basically codes and automates the route. And we also have like, I guess the word Sybil, I don't know how to say it, but like Sybil um, preventative measures. So we use BitGet 
and we have 20 KYC accounts of just people from the Philippines. And we just funnel money through there so that we don't have any sort of connection between our wallets. Because if you have what's called a cluster, so 10 wallets that you know had money sent between them, then the airdrop, when it does drop, they can detect this. And a lot of the time they have like a max cluster of like 10, 5, 15. So if you just don't have any cluster at all, all your wallets are separate, there's no connection between them, then there's no like, oh, this guy's an airdrop farmer. It's just a thousand different wallets doing similar things. And you have to, it's it's quite complex. You need a really good dev because you will have to code custom amounts, custom time intervals and custom routes. So you're going to have to have maybe like, for example, with layer zero, we have like 70 different routes all with custom intervals, custom times of the day. We have, you know, 20 KYC BitGet accounts. It gets pretty complicated. But if you got a dev, a route maker that are good at this stuff, it, it becomes very easy. Yeah, that makes a ton of sense. Thank you. Um, any, I guess just follow up question, any particular um, areas you'd recommend me to be checking out to find a good dev or just, you know, crypto, like <laughs> any specific crypto communities or just kind of got to wait for the money to come to you, I guess. <laughs> I mean, okay, so for example, I realized after the Vegito airdrop, I should be farming Solana because it costs basically nothing. I can source a million dollars in capital and the devs want to code something. My current dev can't do, he doesn't know Rust. He doesn't know Solana contracts either. So I found a guy who knows Solana. So what? how did I do that? Well, I just basically asked everyone I knew in crypto, hi, do you know any Solana devs? Hi, do you know any Solana devs? And I actually run a community. So I just asked in my community, does anyone know Solana devs? And I got a guy who messaged me. I got like five devs. Four of them were shit. One of them was really good. So I've actually brought him on. So I think for you, it's just ask around in your network or join. You can, I, th I think if you just join, like, for example, if you just join the free Discord, that community is filled with like DGENs and like more nerdy people like devs. So if you go in those sort of, not necessarily nerdy, but like communities where a lot of like hacker types are hanging out, you will inevitably find a dev. That makes sense. And the type of dev I want is someone that already has experience building, you know, X, Y, Z on said chain. Is that correct? Yeah. So actually, let me have a look at what my dev said to find for... Okay. So I'm not a coder myself. I have no idea. I've never coded in my life. But I think what you want is someone who knows how to deal with like smart contracts and knows how to knows at least i think maybe you might need someone to know rust for solana and they need to know how to like automate i honestly couldn't tell you i'd have to ask my dev i can message you after with what the requirements my dev set are that but actually would be super uh, helpful hey yeah I, no, that, oh go ahead sorry i was just gonna say like magnus said it's it's really dependent on the chain okay that makes sense hey thank you so much man that was incredibly helpful yeah no worries i, I would say one more thing a lot of chains are evm compatible so you can farm all of them using the same sort of language i guess so for example if you're farming base or layer zero layer zero is not really a chain it's more a bridging protocol but anything that's more evm compatible you can cover all of those with one dev if he knows that one language but if you do something like solana it's going to be a bit trickier okay that makes sense um i'll shoot you a dm afterwards is instagram discord what's the best way to get in touch with you yeah telegram i'll put my telegram in the chat here perfect thank you so much man cool that should work there Hey, Daniel. Yeah, I'll also message you on Telegram as well, because I was just curious. I'm doing smart contract development as well, and I've been looking into automating the airdrop scripts. So I was just curious if you was doing like TypeScript or Python scripts for those automation routes. So I'll DM you on Telegram as well. TypeScript or Python script? Um, that's a great question. I can get back to you. Yeah, no problem. This is the thing. This is what's really important for crypto. You need a team. You need guys in every single like vertical. I don't know a lot of things in crypto and I never want to know them because I find them incredibly boring. But if you have a guy who's just can do all of that thing for you that you don't want to do, it makes things so much easier and it allows you to cover many different sectors. So pre-sales, I'll let the guy find deal flow that runs the group. Airdrops, you code it, you make the routes, you know, even my investing algo. I don't know how to code, but I know what I would want to be coded. So that's the key with, you know, scaling your crypto operations. It's just like find a guy for every sector and you do that through networking and giving value. Sick. Thank you, Daniel. Uh, Lloyd. Hey, Daniel. I'm looking at your long-term investing. Uh, do you mind breaking down like your percentage of like how you're investing to each five of the uh, the cryptos? Yeah. So uh, let me... I actually wrote it down. Let me show you the updated... I can read it out to you. It's just in a document. Let's have a look. One sec. Just finding this document. Oh, got it. 
Okay, so I have 10% of my exposure in Bitcoin, 20% in Ethereum, 20% in Solana. Toshi has gone like 30x. So I think that represents now maybe like three. I think that's between like 15 to 20% of my overall portfolio now. Uh, maybe less, maybe like 10%. Uh, OXO, I've only just begun accumulating that one about a week ago. And I think that's got like half a percent of my total portfolio. And if I was you and I was looking to structure a portfolio, I would do this. You have your major parts of your portfolio in, you know, like the bigger coins. So let's say Bitcoin, Ethereum, Solana. Those are the multi-cycle outperformer safer bets. And then you want three to five high 20 to 100x coins. So you don't want more than five because if you have more than five, you don't have the mental bandwidth to manage those positions. But if you have less than three, you're not hedged in case you're wrong. Because sometimes you might be super bullish on one coin and you just buy that one coin, but it doesn't work out. You know, you, you can't account for all scenarios. Something goes wrong. So if you have three to five of your higher risk upside bets, 10 to 100x sort of potential, then yeah, you want to position an equal sum in each one. So let's say you, you might do like 5% in each coin. So you do five, 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 five. So that's 25% of your portfolio. And then you might do 75% of your portfolio spread between Bitcoin, Ethereum, Solana. That would be like, a decent structure of a portfolio that you could follow. Dope. Yeah, that's relatively similar to my strategy as well. Seb? Hey, what's up, man? I uh, was curious to know if you're mostly just going to be buying in essentially now and as you had before and then offloading later on or if you're going to be doing any rotations. I'm not really big on the rotation game. I think people who rotate too much rotate because they don't have a really strong thesis behind what they own. They rotate because the difference between the coin they own and this new shiny coin in terms of their perception of how good it is, is, you know, very much like if you research something and you really build true conviction in it, it's not easy for you to buy something else. It doesn't mean it's hard for you to sell when it's time to sell, but this like idea of rotating doesn't really make sense to me. Like with Toshi, for example, I've been refining and developing that thesis for a couple months now. And I've come up with this thesis that no one else in the market understood at the exact bottom. And it's now at 30x. And my expectation is this thing can run to um, like a billion market cap. I know a guy who owned 2% of the entire SHIB supply at a very low price. And he fumbled it trying to rotate his profit out. And he missed out on making $400 million at the peak value of SHIB. So he missed $400 million because... He tried to rotate. Now, I spoke to him yesterday and I and I showed him my thesis and he said, man, if I had a thesis like yours on SHIB back in the day, if I had done a proper thesis and I had proper conviction of what I owned, I would not have sold this thing so early. I would have had much more money. So you can try to rotate. You can try to position in different things. But the rotation game tends to be something that you do when you haven't built true conviction on what you own. And if you don't have true conviction on what you own, why do you own it? Right? Like I've spent so much time building this thesis, people don't do this in crypto. People in crypto have a very, very basic approach to how they look at coins. They do very limited research. And because their research is so limited, it doesn't take long to get to that same level of any other coin that they find. If you're a shorter term timeframe trader and you're just looking to capture two to three X swings, you can absolutely rotate. But I don't actually think that's more profitable than finding something early in the bear market or at the end of the bear market that you have super high conviction on and riding that thing through the bull run for you know, insane upside. All right. Thank you. So you think that essentially positioning yourself in right now and just holding through the whole run on high conviction plays is going to outperform everything else? Yeah. If you just find, if this assumes that you can one, find a good project and two, buy it at a good time. But every single person I speak to who has made significant money from crypto and I look at how they made the money, it was either being the house. So they ran a project, they launched an NFT, they had an affiliate link for Binance. So like being the house. Or they just had a coin that they bought and then it went absolutely ballistic and they it was a home run, right? The way that I view crypto is you make most of your money from home runs. And this is what everyone tells me. Everyone I speak to has made money. That guy that I talked about yesterday that I spoke to, he, he's he got like $5, $10 million. He just showed me this euros that he bought like yesterday. Like these guys make serious money and he only makes money from trading and investing. These guys tell you like you make most of your money from home runs and the goal of investing is to mitigate the losses that happen between each home run that occurs. Because not every coin is going to be a home run. Home runs only come up once every probably two, three, four years. So the goal is you don't you lose a little on everything until you find that home run and then you fucking smash it. And that's how you make your big money. 100%. And just as, yeah, to sort of 
add on to that. This is not, by the way, it's not something that I'm like recommending as a replicable strategy, but I have a very good friend named uh, Brian who last bull market turned $6,000 into just over 10 million in DeFi, all of his on-chain data, lost all of it. Literally was down to his last $100,000 two months ago, Fuck. became the number one holder of Grok and just made three and a half million dollars in a few weeks on a single <laughs> trade. So, and, 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 anyway, it, and the reason why I bring this up is because the only reason this happened is because he was like an idiot bag holder all the way up. He was just delusionally confident in this token and it ended up paying off. So I, like I would, I mean, sorry, and I'll, I'll go over to, to Brandon, but like I ha- am in a number of uh, gaming positions that are up five to 15 X off the lows. And I am sitting in all of my positions still. And it's because I don't give a fuck. And I, even if we go back down before we go up, I will just hold it until Bitcoin hits all time high again. Like that's always been my strategy. And I agree. And everybody I know who tries to be a fucking rotator and tries to rotate their profits across 50 different coins gets wrecked every single time. And if they had just held the first one, they would have made more money. Before we get to the next question, I want to add something. Rotating is the selling of a winner to buy a loser. Because let's say you sell a coin that's winning. If you buy any other coin, you're only going to buy a coin that isn't going up much. If a coin didn't go up much, it's probably more likely a losing position. So you're rotating your portfolio out into worse positions run by worse people with worse communities. And also winners don't let you get entries. Winners just pump and they don't let you get in. You look at all the best performing coins, they don't let you get an easy entry. They're fucking wanting to be owned by the entire market. Like Toshi, it does not let you get an easy entry. That thing just keeps going up. So you sell a winner, you rotate into a loser, you're now underperforming the market. You rotate, you you never sell your whole position when you rotate. So you've gone from owning one coin to two, you rotate again, you now got two to four, four to eight, you own fucking 20 coins, you don't know what you're doing anymore. So you can't rotate in my opinion. Yeah, I agree. And you know what else? That also goes for not just rotating out of winners, but like rotating out of coins that you've formed a really, really strong investment thesis in that just haven't moved yet. And I can't tell you how many times I've been like, oh, this is like with Ultra, like I moved a massive position out of a coin called Ultra two weeks ago because I was like, oh my God, the entire rest of my gaming portfolio is up like five, 10 (laughs) X. This stupid fucking coin is not moving. I swear to God, I moved like a mid five figure position out of this coin. And one week later, we do 70% in 24 hours. So it's just like one of those things, bro. Like if when you've made your decisions, you should should stick to them. Anyway, uh, Brandon, you have your hand up too. Yeah. Hey, Dan, my question was around uh, your security protocol and has that changed? Or are you thinking of changing it ever since like, I guess, today's exploits and Ledger and whatnot? Yeah. I mean, I've got to research into it and I'm going to speak to my devs and guys that I know about this a bit more. Um, definitely is making me lose confidence in Ledger. I currently use a Ledger and, um, you know, is a little bit concerning. What I will say is that I'm going in the next month, I'll be going to probably in the next two weeks, I'll be in Miami. I'm getting all the US banking infrastructure set up for my my setup. And my intention is that I already want to begin withdrawing money. Like I have like 40% of my net worth in stable coins and the rest is in, you know, crypto exposure. I don't think that I think there's a certain portion of my stable coins I'll never put into crypto. And so I figured why keep it all in crypto if I'm never going to put it into a coin. So my intentions are to begin the withdrawal process. So I want to minimize my crypto related risk just off the bat with that. I think, yeah, I'm going to look into ledger alternatives as well. My weak point is definitely like building a, a really good like sort of crypto native um, security. I think cold storage is definitely the way to go. I'm just not sure if it's Ledger. But do you have any insights or thoughts yourself? I have to still do research because I've been asleep. I only just woke up for this call. So I've missed most of the uh, the whole Ledger incident. Yeah, I think Magnus put in chat like like Grid and all these other kind of other tools. I mean, that's what I'm looking at as an alternative. I'm, I mean, I'm in one of your chats and looking at support chats and like, it seems like everyone's fudding Ledger uh, and this isn't the first incident. Like all summer, it's been that kind of stuff, but this was a big blow up. So I'm just careful. And like, I'm personally just sitting away for 24 hours waiting for the patches and stuff like that too. I mean, look, I think at the end of the day, Ledger is still like very secure if you are not connecting your Ledger to dApps. Like the problem is you have a Ledger and you connect it. My WhatsApp keeps beeping. I'm sorry about that. Um, Champ's messaging me. So you connect your Ledger to dApps and now you're... Now you're on the internet. Your ledger's on the internet. You should just keep your ledger off the internet and these problems won't happen, in my opinion. Like if, you, if you're connecting your ledger into your MetaMask and you're interacting with dApps, you're just asking for all your money to go away. It'd be like trying to eat healthy and then eating a McDonald's burger. 
Like, what's the point? You know, you, you should probably just eat at the healthy restaurant. Agree. Agree. I also, 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 I have never, ever had a single scare or anything bad happen. Literally just storing relatively large amounts of crypto in cold MetaMask wallets. Like they're just self-custody MetaMask wallets that I don't connect to any dApps. Obviously, I like, well, I had a ledger too that I actually stopped using pretty recently and I'm evaluating other options, but like, just don't fucking connect wallets that have a lot of money in them to anything. Just take the extra two minutes and transfer it to another wallet and then connect the dApps. And like 90% of these problems are solved. But really quickly in the chat, Daniel, Ryan says, can you talk a bit more about identifying the exit time of the back end of the bull market? That's a, an amazing question. And I can give you a really good answer for this. The key with knowing an exit is to know who you're selling to, right? Because knowing the right time to sell is about knowing who is going to be the buyer at that point. If you're trying to sell after 100x on your money, you have to think to yourself, what idiot is going to buy my thing after it's up 100x? What does that person look like? You should do a complete forensic analysis on what the person is going to look like who is going to buy your shit when it's up 100x, who's a complete moron. So for me with Toshi, I have a complete exit thesis for Toshi that Base is a blockchain built by Coinbase. Coinbase is the leader of this bull run and is going to get majority of the retail flows outside of the traditional financial system. They're going to funnel all of their users from Coinbase to the base blockchain because they want to take their users up the value chain and offer them a wider range of products and services. The base ecosystem will be built much better in six to 12 months and they'll begin pr mass promoting the base blockchain. All these idiots who've just got into crypto because it's been pumping are going to go from Coinbase to base and they're going to ask themselves, okay, what do I buy on base? There's no native token of base and there probably won't be for a long time. So people can't just go and buy the base token. They can't buy base token. There's no base token. So what is the token that you buy on base? Well, it's probably the face of base, which is the Toshi coin that I'm talking about. Right. If you're trying to speculate on the growth of a blockchain, you buy its token. So if you speculate on the growth of Solana, you buy Sol. But there's no Sol on base. So how do you speculate on the growth of base? Well, you either buy Coinbase stock, which no one's going to do in the retail crypto space, or you buy Toshi. So I expect my exit liquidity to be a mass flow of like a million people from Coinbase to the base blockchain towards the end of the bull run. And so when I sell, I have to think about is an idiot on the other side of my transaction? Is someone who just got into crypto coming across to the base blockchain someone on the other side of my transaction? And if it is, then that is as good of an exit as I'm going to get. Because you also have to consider as well, when a coin has gone 100x, you've made, let's say you put in 10k, you have a million dollars. If a coin goes up from 100x to a 200x, your million dollars turns into 2 million. So you're only 2x your money, right? How hard is it to sell at 100x and then put your money somewhere else? and then 2x it. It's pretty easy, right? A 2x is not that hard, but a 100x coin going from 100x to a 200x is actually a very difficult task, right? It, at least the way that I view it. And so what I would do is, is even if something's at a 100x on my position, I probably would be taking major profits. Even if I'm maybe not convinced it's the exact top right now, I would still probably be taking you know major profits because even if it goes 100 to 200x, it's only a 2x I can find 2Xs anywhere. I can 2X on Solana. I can 2X on Bitcoin. You know, I'd rather not hold crazy exposure, a million dollars in this meme coin any longer. So, so that's at least uh, how I would view it. You have to think about who your exit liquidity is. Just like we envision the ideal customer, guys, you, we fucking envision the ideal back buyer. It's bad. Right, let's go. Let's go to one more question from Ali. Yeah, it kind of ties into my question. So, Every cycle, <clears throat> you might hear the meme like super cycle. This time is different. But I mean, generally, do you think the four year cycle is going to play out to, like it usually always does? I mean, the, the thing with crypto is the thing with investing is stock market has a passive bid and the crypto market has a passive ask. So what I mean by that is in the stock market, there is a passive amount of money that flows inevitably into stocks. And that is why even when we have world wars, potentially inflation, recessions, the stock market is about to hit an all-time high because the stock market and the real world don't really ever completely align on certain things, right? You can have stocks booming and a world falling apart because the stock market has a passive bid of money, which basically stops the price from ever going down and staying down for a significant amount of time, at least recently, right? Governments around the world print tons of money, that money inevitably flows into stocks, blah, blah, blah. Crypto is the opposite. Crypto has a passive ask. So during the bull market, 
as the coins go up more and more, you have more and more new coins being created. So you go from having, let's say, a thousand coins to 10,000 coins. That increases the amount of coins that you can buy by 1,000%, which is a passive ask because now you also have exchanges selling, you have project founders selling, and everyone that runs the casino is selling and they're selling it into fiat. For example, the founder of Curve, he bought two mansions in Australia worth 40 million US dollars. Where do you think he got 40 million from? From selling the Curve token. So that's a passive ask on the crypto economy that flows out so that the money can be spent in the real world. So that's sort of a how you would how I would understand the crypto cycle, but with this ETF, Bitcoin now has a passive bid if the ETF gets approved. It's now connected into the passive bid perma bull market of the stock market. So will altcoins not have a four-year cycle? I think altcoins are still going to be incredibly volatile, pump and dump sort of schemes. Will Bitcoin potentially break away from its four-year cycle? Yeah, I think it has a good chance of sort of doing its own sort of more stock market related price action. You know, the stock market doesn't have a crazy four-year cycle because it has this passive bid. It sort of it sort of blunts out the chart and smoothens it out a bit. So we'll see what happens, but that's at least how I look at it. I think Bitcoin can sort of just be an outlier, but I think old coins are still fucked. Perfect. Thank you. Banger. I agree. Daniel, this has been an amazing session, dude. Uh, so first of all, everybody, actually, let's do this. Everybody, let me know in chat if you got any value out of what, what Daniel has been talking about this evening. Let me know in chat if, if you got any value out of this. Because Daniel, I think you've done an absolutely fantastic job. Yeah. And I really appreciate you, dude. And even as as somebody who is super heavily invested and active in crypto, like I feel like your perspective has has got me thinking about new things. So I appreciate you. With that said, dude, like y- you briefly went over it earlier. Like, I mean, dude, you, you done a really amazing job. Feel free if you want to talk a little bit about like for anyone who's interested, I think you, s- you said you run your own mastermind group. Like where can people reach you if they want to work more closely with you and learn from you? Yeah. Thank you for the feedback, guys. I appreciate that. Um, good to see you got some value. So uh, yeah, I run a mastermind. It's basically just everything that we talk about here. I just do it all day, every day in a mastermind, but it's more like actionable. So you actually get access to everything I talk about. So you get the pre-sales, you get the automated airdrop farming, long-term investing strategy, the coin picks, everything. So if you want like basically what we talk about on this call, but like everything, like hands-on guidance, making a plan, everything, then yeah, I run a mastermind for that. I don't want to make this call too chilly. I want to make it mostly value, but feel free to message me on Telegram to ask about it. I'll put the Telegram in the chat. But yeah, it's just like a mastermind. I know everyone shits on paid groups, but I would like to think that my group is different to most paid groups. So <laughs> yeah, that's that's that, that's a bit of an overview of how it works and what it is. Appreciate it, bro. Yeah, I know. I saw you dropped your Telegram in the chat. Guys, if you have more questions for Daniel um, or interested in what he's doing, definitely shoot him a DM. Daniel, what time is it for you? Uh, it is morning, man. It's a... Uh... It's midday. I have nothing else to do if anyone else has a couple more questions. Guys, does anyone else have a question? Evan asked a banger question. If you could answer his, it's in chat. It's up like, I don't know, like 10 or 15. Yeah, I can, I can actually, this. I say, I can just ask it directly here. In your opinion, what's the, I mean, obviously, you know, we're starting to go into a bull market, but um, what's your opinion on the state of the market at the moment? And more so what I'm wanting to get some, get your thoughts on is, Really, if you had to make a guess, how much time do we have to position ourselves well for this bull run? Um, you know, it's just how long do you think we have to funnel money into it? And um, at what point would you stop? <laughs> Magnus, um, yesterday. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yesterday <laughs> right would have here. been good. The thing with crypto is, man, you go on YouTube and Twitter, everyone has like predictions, price predictions and shit. Like, I put some in this video, not because I actually think they're going to play out, but just because it gives people comfort it, think giving a price prediction. I have no idea what price is going to do. I have no fucking clue. Tomorrow it could pump, it could dump. I don't know. My edge is in knowing that I will, day to day, I will look at the market and I will know certain times that I should make a certain decision. So every day you look at the data. On one of the days, the data is going to say buy. On one of the days, the data is going to say sell. And if you just buy when it said buy and sell when it said sell, the in-between doesn't really matter. So people say, oh, I need to know like what price is going to do. If you just had a system which you look at every day and it would just tell you to buy at the right time and then tell you to sell, you don't actually have to guess what the bull market's going to do. But to give you an answer, because I know you don't have that system yet, my at least base case is that the ETF gets approved in January. 
there's a two month period where there's no ETF live. And even when the ETF goes live, it's going to have very little volume. I don't think it's going to heat up for at least a few months. I think it takes time for BlackRock to turn on the shilling, the shilling system. And I think it's a, it's like cold starting an engine, right? The ETF takes two months to come out. Bitcoin goes down. It's no longer pumping. No one gives a fuck anymore. But once the ETF's live, BlackRock's going to like cold start the engine. It'll start to get kicked off. And then it will sort of, I think, maybe rally into the, the halvening event. So I reckon maybe there's a, a period of accumulation late January, February is what I think based off the, you know, what I think at the moment, but my opinion can change at any time. And um, I'm already positioned. So it's not like I have to be correct on my prediction. Like I can be wrong and still make millions of dollars. It doesn't affect me, but for you, obviously it's, it's different. So I would say the key is don't FOMO here. If you FOMO here and you do that for 20 years straight, you lose all your money. So you should never do something that's not going to make you make money over a 20 year time frame. Okay, because we're not here for short term little profits. We're here to be investors that make millions and millions of dollars over the course of you know our lives. So buying here right now doesn't make you money on a long time frame. I my friend that I talked about who had two percent of the SHIB supply, he sold out his entire portfolio yesterday or like this week, right? Four million US dollars. He like three X on Solana. He's sold. So he sold out. People are looking to buy now. Funny conflict, isn't it? I would say you get a dip in a month or two. That makes sense. Thank you so much. Anyone else? Yeah, gotta love BlackRock. Bro, BlackRock is the best thing that... It's the best and worst thing that could happen to crypto. <laughs> oh, he said black cock. He didn't even say BlackRock. Fucking send it. Yeah, fucking send it is right. Yeah. I think... Uh, yeah, I agree. I think we dip after the ETF before. I um, think... It just like... Heating up. Like, just imagine it. Like, ETF comes out. Oh, sorry, guys. We're going to get it ready for two months. Oh, okay. Uh, What do we do now? Oh, shit. Okay. Panic. Well, so, in my experience, dude, the, like it's every of almost every event is a sell the news event in crypto. And, like, also, dude, like, yeah, unless this ETF literally dropped and they were like, uh, they immediately injected all the money into the market, like, it, <laughs> with the type of price action that we're seeing leading up to this thing, like, it, there's, I don't think there's any way that we don't see some sort of pullback. Me saying that is going to cause it to just literally nuke straight upwards on the day of the ETF. I don't fucking know. Like, I really don't know. I'm allocated either way. And I'm just doubling down on winners. So yeah, the, uh, the key with the bull run is you don't want to sell to buy lower. You need to be able to handle volatility. Like the path to a 10x has about three 40% retracements. The path to a 100x has maybe three 70% retracements, 80% retracements. Like you need to forward map out all possibilities before you've entered a position. Because if you don't know what could happen before, like once you've entered, when it happens, you're going to go, oh, fuck, I wasn't ready for this. And you'll make a bad decision. So I know, for example, Toshi is probably going to go 80% down and then it will go to a billion dollar market cap. You have to be ready for that. So like with Bitcoin, if you it went like it, when we're positioned, it could crash 30% after the ETF. We don't care. Like we're, we're positioned. We're ready. We entered way lower. Agree. Okay, sick. Daniel, this has been, this has been really good, man. I appreciate you coming in. Thank you so much. Yeah, no worries. You guys ask really good questions. So that helps a lot, but um. But yeah, we can we can wrap it up here if you'd like. It seems like everyone's asked their questions. One hundred percent, bro. We uh, yeah, dude, you've been awesome. I, we like I said, we really appreciate you giving us um your time. Everybody, if you like like uh, we said earlier, if you want to connect with Daniel, got questions, shoot him a DM on Telegram. Daniel, I appreciate you coming in here and giving us your time. I've had a wonderful time in this session. Also, the reason your phone was dinging so much is because I did text you a couple of things on WhatsApp, <laughs> but it has to do with Miami and something totally separate. So appreciate you, man. Um, everybody, thank you for coming. Daniel, appreciate you for coming. Do you have any closing words for us? Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, saw, I actually saw the message. That's good. I appreciate that. Um, so I just put the... Uh, I have a YouTube channel where I talk about all this stuff, longer form, if you're interested. I just linked that in the, in the chat. But yeah, again, if, if you're interested in the mastermind to like, you know, get access to everything I'm doing to make eight figures... Feel free to DM me on Telegram and um, or you can just message Champ and ask him how to, you know, do things. So yeah, I'm happy to answer any questions as well if you guys want to message me as well. So yeah, it was good to talk to you all. 100 percent Thank you, Daniel. Appreciate Thank you, you Daniel. everybody. Thank you for pulling up. I'll talk to you guys soon. Awesome. See you guys. Cheers. See it.